equation or uh, the algebra on a test. Quadratic equation is only worth half a point. The algebra is only ever worth one point. So if you get to where I get the five variables right, you're at like a nine out of ten. Okay. All right. So it says Mario ball is thrown upward at three meters per second from a cliff of a of height eleven meters. Okay. Part one says how long until he hits the ground. So first thing I need to do is draw a picture. Okay. So here is Mario ball, and he's going to do something like this, and then come back down. Okay. All right. And how high is this cliff? Eleven meters. Okay. All right. And I'm going to draw, excuse me, I'm going to say, how many of you call it up positive? Up positive? Okay. I'm going to go ahead and make up positive. Okay. And now I'm just going to go and start listing my five variables right away. Okay. What direction is this in, the x or the y? The y. So I'm going to use y minus y naught, initial velocity, final velocity, acceleration in the y, and uh, I'm missing one, time. Okay. Did I tell you time? Nope. Do we know the acceleration in a free fall problem? In this case, because up is positive, negative 9.8 meters per second squared. What about V final? Now we've got to decide where V final is. I say how long until he hits the ground. Okay. So what's the trip going to do? Let's say this is the ground right here. It's going to go up and then it's going to come down. So this is my starting point. Right before it hits the ground will be my ending point. Does everybody see how I picked the initial and the final and where I picked them? Okay, so my V final okay, will not be zero okay, right before he hits the ground. Okay, so he's going to go up and then come down. Right before he hits the ground, the V final is some big number headed down. It is not zero. Okay? Uh, because if it hits the ground, is the acceleration negative 9.8 anymore? Nope, so you, you're filling these out for when it's in the air. Okay? So V final, I don't know. Okay? I don't know. What about V initial? Was that given? Yep and it's upward, so that's positive. So I must know displacement. Okay? Think about, when you're doing displacement, think about where he starts and where he finishes. He starts here, he finishes down here. Okay? So which way did he go overall, up or down? Down. He was displaced downward. Okay? Or if you prefer, okay, I haven't said this yet, but final minus initial position, right? Okay. If you want to put it an x-axis and do some stuff with coordinates, you can do that. You can make up numbers. It'll work. I usually like to call where he starts zero. Okay. And then since down is negative, this would be negative 11. Okay. Negative 11 minus zero is negative 11. Or much simpler than that for most of you, just say which way was he displaced? Was he displaced up or down for my trip? This is where he starts. This is where he ends. Negative 11. How many people got those three filled out correctly with the correct sign? Okay. How many of you forgot the negative on the 11? All right, common mistake. You can see there's a bunch of you. Okay. So displacement is a vector. You want to double check your signs on displacement and velocity, velocity, and acceleration. Time is the only one you don't have to worry about. Okay. All right. So now I pick my equation. Y minus y naught equals V naught T plus 1 half A T squared because which one don't I care about for this first part? V final, okay? So I have negative 11 meters equals three meters per second times T plus one half times negative 9.8 meters per second squared times V squared, and I need to get a different pen. Let's see if this one's a little better. Yeah, there we go, all right. Now when I get here, Okay. If you get to here at this point, you've accumulated one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine points to get to here. Okay, because this was all just physics. We haven't done any algebra yet. Okay, the algebra is the last part, and this problem would be worth half a point. Okay, this one would, would actually be out of ten and a half, uh, or no, it'd be out of nine and a half. This problem. Okay, you'd have half a point for getting from here to the answer, unless your answer is unreasonable. More on that in a minute. Okay, at this point, because you guys probably a lot of you messed up the algebra, I'm going to drop the units on a test. Do not drop the units. If you drop the units and I have an initial off on it, okay, told you it was okay, and initialed your paper, what are you going to get if you drop the units magically in the middle of the problem? Zero. Zero, okay. If you do want to drop the units on one of these with the quadratic, okay, I'll come over, I'll put a box on your paper, and I'll initial it, and you can drop the units. But you got to ask, okay. Negative 11 equals 3t. This will be negative 4.9t squared. Now this is where algebra begins, the prerequisite for this course while you need algebra. Okay? I'm going to move the 11 over, or I can move these two over. Okay? 
Uh, I actually like when my parabolas open up. My guess is most of you want the parabola to open down. So I will add 11 to both sides so that we'll get 0 equals, I'm going to reorder, negative 4.9 t squared. You don't have to reorder. Plus 3t plus 11 equals 0. At this point, you got to do the math. Somebody that got that, who had that on their paper? Did you graph it? Okay, and what did you get for t? I got 11. Can somebody else that knows how to graph this confirm? Yes. I got 1.84. You got 1.84. So I need to graph it. <laughs> All right. Let's see here. y equals negative 4.9 x squared plus 3x plus 11 graph. All right, now mine's going to be an approximation because I got to be honest, on my old calculator here, I forget how to get the exact value, but I will get an approximate value. And I am getting, let's see here, an x value of like one point, what'd you get? 1.84. Perfect. Because I'm getting between 1.7 and 1.9. So uh, on the two values that are calculated on my calculator. So 1.84 seconds. So something went wrong. Okay. Anybody else get that? No one even called that one out. Did you get that one originally? Yeah. Okay. So 1.84 seconds. Okay. The other way you could have done this, if you don't know what I'm doing with the graphing, okay, that's where I'm just graphing this, and I'm reading off this value right here. Okay. You can use the quadratic equation. Okay. Where this is A, B, and C. Plug and chug to that equation. Solve. Okay. You do get two solutions. Okay. Let's talk about these solutions. Okay. We did this for a displacement of negative 11 meters. Okay? One of the answers comes out to be a positive time. The other one comes out to be a negative time. Can you have negative time? No. Okay? So you have to throw out the negative answer. Okay? And I said that this is going from here to here is where the half point. As long as you don't come up with something like negative time. If you have an answer of negative time and you leave it like that, you don't write a note saying, I know negative time is impossible, okay? or you come up with like five hours, and you don't make a little note on the test saying, hey, this isn't reasonable, okay? You will lose significant points, okay? Significant points if you come up with an answer that's completely out of whack and you don't recognize that, okay? Negative time is the biggie, okay? Also, one other thing, okay? This is the part where I dropped the units and pretend it was initialed. Let's say if you left off this, okay, and this was initialed on the test, what do you get? Zero. Zero. You gotta have units everywhere, okay? All right. That was part number one. Let me go ahead and stop there. Let me do number two separately for a video.